So, dudes, welcome back to the Gregor Gaming Experience. This video is going to be, uh, it's not going to take me too long to make because I'm going to be watching a little bit of NAL after I do upload it. But there's new patch notes on the live build, so I figured I might as well talk about them. Let me close my door. Okay. So, obviously, new map. Pretty, uh, pretty big deal. Haven't had a uh, new map, like, new new map since, uh, since Outback. Haven't had a, a map that people really like since Villa. So that's even further back than Outback. Uh, I played one game on Emerald Plains so far. Uh, I do plan on uploading a video uh, eventually kind of talking about how I feel about the map after I've had more time to kind of unpack it. Um, I like it. For now. I, I might end up hating it the more that I get into it. But at the moment, uh, I, think it's, I think it's really interesting. It's, it evokes a lot of feel from older siege maps while also trying to take into consideration lessons learned uh, from map design for Siege over the course of the past, like, seven years. One of the issues that was inherent with Siege map design from, from the get-go was that people didn't... Ubisoft didn't really get, uh, at the time, understandably, how fast-paced people were going to uh, move and take map control. So maps were a lot smaller and, and felt a little bit more constricted and claustrophobic because the pacing and the... And, uh, Play-by-play -play of the games was was just a little bit slower. Now it's kind of sped up. So now what they've done is they've created a large map, but it has a lot of rooms. It has a lot of interconnecting um, hallways and corridors. It doesn't really have a, like a particularly um, set linear flow, but it still feels like there's there's um, power positions and potential for outplays and. A lot of this is kind of gobbledygook that's going to be hard to explain to somebody if they haven't played a lot of FPS games. But I think I think really where the map excels, it a lot of people were saying that that it's it's just Bartlett, like it feels really similar to Bartlett University. I don't really I I can kind of see that vibe for maybe one or two rooms here and there, um, just because and also because it's very window focused. But I really feel like it's a it's a cleaner. And, and better Bartlett, but it's not, it's not a Bartlett rework, but it, it feels like it takes the lessons of Bartlett and tries to actually take them into consideration. I personally had fun on it. You can, uh, you can check it out in all playlists, as you can see here, ranked, unranked, quick match, TDM, newcomer, lone wolf PVE. Um, Ubisoft said, oh, so you don't have enough opportunities to test it, huh? How about fucking now? So, uh, yeah, now you don't have an excuse to say, oh, I don't know what it's like. I haven't played it. Operator balancing. Let's go by uh, piece by piece. Okay, Bandit. Bandit can now attach multiple batteries to the same surface or device. Cool. Makes, uh, makes Bandit tricking a little bit easier. Don't have to worry about the timing as much. You know, I don't think Bandit's a bad operator. I just think Cade's better <laughs> uh, for most situations, but... Sometimes Cade gets banned. Cade's a very, very common ban, actually. So it's useful to, to know Bandit. It's useful to know how to Bandit trick. It's useful to uh, get good with the MP7. He's a good operator. Um, this is going to make him even better. So no complaints there. He's in a pretty good spot. Blackbeard. Added a Claymore. Took away his breaching charges. What if instead of remove breaching charges, it said... What if it said uh, removed Blackbeard? That'd be a great change. I I don't know I don't know what to do with this dude. I really don't. So, some people said that the that Osa the operator should have been the Blackbeard rework, and I and I think that would have been interesting. I I've always been of the opinion that Blackbeard should have some kind of mobile cover, um, not have a literal like headshot denial device on his shield. That's kind of it's kind of stupid. I think they should just completely rework the character and um, do something different with um, do something different with this gun because this guns kind of suck. Like the SR twenty five is okay, the Mark seventeen is bad. So really, the only thing he has going for him is that stupid face shield. I think if they created some kind of new mechanic unrelated to the face shield. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because something that the Ubisoft devs have said before is that they wanted Blackbeard to be like an Overwatch operator, not like Overwatch the game, like an Overwatch like 
tactical uh, mamilsim, tactical mamilsim uh, realism guy, you know, on a vantage point, covering his his buddies from like like a a pretty decent distance, you know, watching um people try you know cutting off crosses, trying to keep people from making crosses and the plays on his teammates. So like the guy who covers the bomb planter, I guess that's a good way to put it. Um, but, but the thing is, like his his kid isn't really tailored to that. He just kind of sits on an angle, and then and then you know, if he gets swung by a high rate of fire gun, he just dies. Or if he gets one by a low rate of fire gun, he gets to get a free kill. <laughs> like he's just he's just kind of a dumb character design, uh, in my opinion. He's he's always he's always been kind of dumb. My idea, you know, and maybe we can talk about it in a um in a separate video. I think they should can the shield and give him a powerful quote unquote overwatch gun, right? Do something either with a scar or his SR twenty five. Do something to it. Make him, you know, the gun operator. Give his, uh, give like his Mark 17, um, like destructive capabilities from far away. Give it like, you know how the DP-27 on Tachanka can, um, you can use that for sight setup? Well, on attack, you could give that equivalent to the attackers. You could have somebody that could like eviscerate a, um, like, like a, like a big desk. Like there's a really big desk on consulate, the lawn desk, that sometimes gets opened up depending on what the defenders want to do. But most of the time defenders hide behind it. So Blackbeard can maybe get on those spiral windows, shoot the crap out of that desk, and then removes that piece of cover. Or he could, you know, you know, basically be like the like the debris destroyer, you know, like this demolition derby kind of kind of character. Just give him something that allows him to like get an advantage by playing, you know, on a window, which is usually what he does anyway for the head glitch thing with the with the shield, but actually make it useful for him. Right? Don't just give him. Don't just give him a free headshot, or, or free denied headshot, and one headshot game. It's kind of, I don't know. What do you guys think of that? Let me know in the comments. Is that a Thunderbird? Is that a Thunderbird in a pro league game? That that might be something to talk about later. Gridlock now has four tracks canisters. Um, she she needed something, man. She like, Gridlock's problem isn't that okay. Gridlock is worse than Nomad at crowd controlling roamers. The difference is that Gridlock still has some usefulness as a site execute operator. Like she can throw her stuff like right after the plant, and then that's a really useful time waster. But but for um for flank watching and trying to counter flanks, it's not that great because Nomad can put the air jab underneath a hard angle and then it has to be impacted. Right, can't shoot it. Um, so I think that's a fair change for her. I I uh, I think Ubisoft should adopt a wait and see approach with this one. I I think that she has a lot of potential to be incorporated into the meta. She was a part of the meta at one point, and she didn't really go under undergo a lot of changes at the time. But I think people just kind of found out that Nomad could kind of do the same thing. Um. Which people do learn in PL, you know, they don't figure out everything overnight. Um, I think I think it's a good buff, and I think it's going to open up a little bit more opportunities for her. Um, but I'll, I'll wait and see how it affects her in uh, competitive. All right, here's the dumb one. Here's here's the change that nobody likes, uh, myself included. Um, Nomad plus Oryx. So the knockback. That. That was that was a good reenactment. The knockback that you get from the Oryx dash and and the Nomad air jab has been has been nerfed quite a bit. Um, this doesn't look like a huge change. Uh, one and a quarter second versus two seconds. But if I get out a stopwatch and show you, this is a second and a corner. This is two seconds. Close enough. I mean, it's still like. Bruh. And operators will now remain prone after recovering from a knockback effect, which, cool, I guess. I mean, they have to, like, stand back up. So I think Ubisoft believes that this is going to kind of rework the knockback effect and give people a, a little bit more ability to make a play after they get hit by it. But the issue I have here is that it's kind of the point. You're not supposed to be able to make a play after you get hit by it. Because you made a mistake. <laughs> like, if you get Oryx knockbacked, 
you're you're trolling like hard. And with Nomad, it goes wee 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 like like don't just don't run into the wee. Just don't do that. Oh, well they have a whole bunch on the site. And now I can't get into site. Okay, your roam failed. You let them get site control. <laughs> there's there's so many there's so many other arguments in terms of the way Nomad uses her gadget that are like, oh, well, what if Nomad gets to do this? Well, you let her. Oh, what if Nomad gets to do that? You let her. Oh, if Nomad, uh, uh. Oh, well, she could have used that earlier, but she decided to use it here. Right? Nomad's not going to pocket, like, all three of her air jabs and then just use them for post-plant. Like, she can. But but the the most efficient way to use them is, is over the course of the round. You know, like, use one for, um... For this flank, like Consulate's a great example of a map she's really good on. Like you block off the um, you block off the antechamber flank, or you block off the benches flank, and you kind of cut your way a little bit closer into the site, and you air jab off uh, yellow stairs when the plant's down, or you air jab off uh, kitchen rotate, or you air jab off security. Right? You're not gonna use all three of them at the same time. Most of the time. Rainbow Six Siege is a team-based game. There's an early phase, there's a middle phase, and there's like there's a site execute phase. Okay? There's there's lots of moving parts here. Stop stop isolating like little moments. Like little moments. Oh well Nomad got all of her stuff down. And well if I get nomaded, then I can't I can't kill her. Yeah! That's the point. <laughs> you ran into a flank watch gadget. It it, it goes wee woo. It goes wee woo. If you get too close to it, you get knocked back. Don't don't run into the thing that's going wee woo. Change your plan. Go somewhere else. Find another route. Take a staircase that goes underneath the map or something. Right? Like if you're trying to get through yellow and yellow's air jabbed off, well then go through spiral. Go through visa. Like she put herself in a position there where she got map control where she could safely put the air jab. She didn't just get to do it for free. You let her do it. It makes a giant yellow line where she puts it. Okay, Warden. Increase duration and cooldown of glance smart glasses. The 20 seconds each. Okay, so it, so it has a 20 second duration and a 20 second cooldown. Okay, 20 second duration is cool. I like that. Why is the cooldown longer? <laughs> uh, like, it's, it's a little bit of, it's like, it's like a side nerf buff. A nerfant? A buffant? I don't know what to call it. Like, th this, I think, the increased duration outweighs the cooldown. Because I think that's the biggest problem there, is that Warden has to time the thing and have it, like, exactly right. Which is always kind of frustrating. Because, uh, in terms of the amount of utility that can get thrown at you, 10 seconds, it seems like a lot of time. But in terms of how fast an execute actually happens... 10 seconds isn't really a lot of time uh, in terms of your ability to actually make a play off of it. If that, was, if that wasn't a complete sentence, I apologize. I hope I got my thoughts out. I, I really think um, it's cool. I just don't know if the cooldown is necessary. That's it. Okay, Ying. Uh, we, we got into it on the stream the other night because of this one. Um, increase the number of candelas to four, but reduce the duration of the candelas flash to 1.4 seconds. Instead of three seconds. Okay. Whoo, hot take. Hot take inbound. Here we go. Predator missile. Okay. Um, three seconds was too much freaking time for this gadget. And one and 1.4, so a little under one and a half, is fine. That's perfectly okay. That's enough time for a reasonable player to be able to make a play off of that. And she gets four of them, so she gets to burn more ADSs. The likelihood of you actually flashing somebody goes higher and... If you can't capitalize on that and get the kill based off of all of this, right? The fact that you can, like, throw a whole bunch of these things and they go, like, wing, 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 and you get four of these freaking things, and one of them probably isn't going to get zapped by a Jaeger ADS because you have four instead of three. Math. Um, if you can't get a kill on a flashed Candela person, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why. What are you doing? Are you just sitting there? Like, you throw the thing and you're like, Bro, what, what is going on? Go! Go! Sorry, I got a little tilted. Anyway, uh, what's this? Claymore? Increase the number of claymores to... It's not bad.
Okay, that's the hard part. It's not that it's bad, it's just kind of like... Why? Like, it'd be one thing if we had four different versions of Nomad. We had, like, four different versions of flank watch attackers. And then they all have variations of an air jab. And then we gave them twice as many of their air jab gadgets. I mean, obviously, that's that's a little bit of an apples to oranges comparison because air jabs and claymores don't do the same thing. But they, they do fulfill similar roles. I just... Claymores, to me, I feel like they were fine. I know they weren't really in the meta, but I, I think this is done to... I think this is being done to kind of curb the frag grenade meta. And the issue I have in this particular case is that frag grenades aren't um, strong because there are other options that are weaker than them. F frag grenades are strong because there's no, like, there's no disadvantage to, to bringing them. I don't know if that makes sense, but there's pretty much no disadvantage, right? Like if you have three people with, with frag grenades, you can just spam out people out of a corner and gain map control that way. Like that's such an important aspect in the meta right now. Like there's just some corners that are just going to be a pain in the ass to take, uh, to take gunfights with. And it's more, it's, it's more certain to clear those positions with frag grenades right now. That's why ADSs are so important. Like Jaeger will never go away. Because that aspect of the game is never going to change. So what I think they need to do is cut back on some of the frag grenades and give people that new EMP gadget that's supposed to be coming out or whatever it's going to be called. That's what I think they should do. I don't... Uh, I, I kind of want to talk about Claymores more moving forward. Not right now. Because... I still think we're going to have to kind of wait and see on this one, like the gridlock change earlier. I know it's live now. And the time to do that should have been the test server, but I couldn't play the test server. So, anyway, let's see what's going on with that. Name. Oh my goodness! Squidward! Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch up with the, uh, the PL commentary stuff on Friday. And as always, have a good one. Deuces.